Hello and welcome back to Frogboy X1 Gaming. I'm Andrew and today I wanted to talk a little bit about the 4080 Super again. So I tested it yesterday. I put some videos up for you guys. I really didn't get around to making this video in time, but um, it, is, it is now in the morning and I want to kind of talk to you guys a little bit about the 1440p performance of the 4080 Super. So if you guys like this content, please don't forget to like and subscribe. Now, so yesterday I came home and I, and I and I tried a few games. You know, I tried some Ghost Recon. I tried some uh, you know Cyberpunk 2077. Uh, I did some Witcher 3, uh, and obviously a couple of other games. I just didn't. I haven't posted up any uh, any of the footage for for anything else just yet. Uh, let Let's talk about the overall ray tracing performance in this. So the ray tracing performance is like the biggest selling point when it comes to the NVIDIA GPUs. They, well, not only that, I mean like there's the DLSS and stuff. So let's talk about the cost of this versus the, the actual Per, uh, the, the actual things that you're paying for when it comes to an NVIDIA GPU in the higher end. Now, last generation for the 3080, and see, here's the thing. Like, the 3080 was a good card at a decent price, but it just didn't really have that, that oomph, you know, due to, like, you know, the lack of VRAM and stuff. It kind of did shorten the overall high-end experience of that card pretty significantly by only by only launching with 10 gigabytes of vram but then if you notice just to get two extra v two extra gigs of vram on that 30 series stack uh you, you were you were going up over a thousand dollars for like your 3080 12 gig or your 3080 ti which pretty much put those in a different bracket which i think at this point now that most of them games have been like um of have been updated and and you know fixed and all of that stuff the 3080 12 gig and the 3080 ti 12 uh 12 gigabyte cards are probably doing significantly better now i never did buy one of those i only had the 3080 10 gig and then switched right over to the amd stack at a 7900 xt and, and that absolutely blew me away because now you're getting you know 3090 power for for like i think i think i paid 840 something for that for that 7900 xt and that card you know compared to what i had was absolutely like that blew me away that was that was a pretty decent uptick and uplift in in performance and and, and features with the adrenaline software and everything i really love the amd experience and so Fast forward to now, finally getting like a 4080 Super, you know, NVIDIA second to the top, you know, highest card that you can basically get out of their stack right now. And then looking at the performance difference between the 7900 XT versus the 4080 Super, I'm just like, I'm not seeing like that big of a, like that big of an uptick. Like it is better. It does perform better than the 7900 XT most of the time it's it's uh but it but it is but it is within striking distance so when you look at that when you take the 700 dollars um price point that you can now pretty much find a 7900 xt for versus the you know 1200 dollars that i just paid for the 4080 you have to look at you have to look at those those other features from nvidia the ray tracing the dlss the the ray reconstruction the the things that that card markets itself on especially if you're only using the features that come for gaming um if you're if you're using cuda or any of that stuff for for work processes and things that you, you know that, that are that are useful that actually add even a bigger increase to the overall price of the nvidia gpus then then maybe the, the then maybe the trade-off or maybe the uh the experience isn't isn't that much greater i mean like maybe maybe that falls right into a to a good price to performance when you when you take those features into consideration but if you're just a gamer uh like i am and you're not really interested in any of that stuff it's uh it's it 
it's really difficult man like it's difficult because i know there's going to be people in the comment section that are freaking out on me you know like th th there just is there's nothing you can say on on this stuff to really make anybody understand so you guys saw the performance of the last three videos that I put out for the uh, for the 4080 Super. Obviously, you can see what the you know the uh, like like what my GPU utilization is, what my CPU utilization is. All running with the 5900X. You can also see the the overall frame rate, the stability of how those games are playing, exactly what you're getting for that type of money. And you know, in my opinion, in my honest opinion. I don't think that what you're getting f over like a 7900 XT warrants that extra cost in gaming. In gaming. Um, but here's the thing, man. And, and, and this, is, this is probably true. And obviously this content is designed and built for people that are coming from consoles over to PC and thinking, oh man, I need a $3,000 PC and I need this and I need that. Well, if you really look at it, if I want to get the absolute most that my 4080 Super can offer, I have to upgrade my platform to a better CPU. And that better CPU is going to get me on average about 20% more performance than I'm already getting right now. That's another <clears throat> six to a thousand dollars, depending on what motherboard you get. Because uh, I mean, you can get motherboards as cheap as a couple hundred bucks, all the way up to six hundred dollars. Then your processor, which is I think the last time I checked, the seventy just for like the the best gaming PC or CPU is the seventy eight hundred X three D, which is around another four hundred bucks. So depending on your motherboard that and your ram which is you know 32 gigs about 120 bucks from what i'm looking at um if i was to go with the cheapest best board that's another 700 dollars, guys that's another 700 dollars upgrade fee on top of the 1200 dollars that i just spent for the 4080 super then i have to go through i have to you know do all of the putting it together all of the setting up, which isn't a big deal. I mean, that, that, that is, you know, part, part and parcel for, you know, building a PC and doing it yourself and, you know, trying to maximize your, the, the money that you're putting in to the performance that you're getting out. If you build it yourself, you're obviously going to save more money. So it's obviously going to be a little bit better, um, in terms of overall cost wise. But if you're, if you're buying this stuff and you're having somebody else put it together, you can definitely, you, you're adding extra money on top of that. That, that you could have saved. So the real actual cost of a 4080 Super to fully maximize and get the best performance out of it is, is gonna cost me another $700. Whereas with my 7900 XT, it's about the same thing. You know, if I, if I want a 20% boost over, over what I'm already getting right now, it's going to be another $700 minimum just for that, just for that. So you have to take these things into consideration when making a decision like if you're coming to pc right now you're probably coming in you're probably getting your your pre-built or or doing whatever you're doing you're probably just going to build right on the am5 platform so that's not going to be as big of a deal but if you've already invested money in your pc and you want to continue to grow and just squeeze out whatever little basically is what i'm trying to say is if you've got a mid-range PC, you are probably going to be happier with the overall performance to price ratio than you will ever be getting into the high end. So you're, you're going to get into the high end. And, and this is the thing, man. This is like the mental thing that happens to a lot of PC gamers or a lot of console gamers when they switch over from the console to the PC. Their, their mindset is, hey, console, $500. I'm spending five times, six times that to get a high-end PC, and this is the results I'm getting. But if you chop that down to like a mid-range PC, which is like 1,500 bucks, you know, I mean, maybe even cheaper if you build it yourself, or or, or even going console equivalent, you know, type type uh, parts and stuff like that. I think that the you'll be more impressed 
at a mid-range point for coming into PC gaming than you ever would be going into a high-end rig. Like, yeah, obviously you're gonna be like, see, and here's the biggest problem, man. Like, this is the biggest problem. Say you go out and you buy a 4090 pre-built. You know, you, you spend a 3,500, 4,000 bucks. You, you buy that. That is, <laughs> that's like seven times more than a, than, a, than a console. Seven times more. And say you're playing something, <clears throat> you, you get a new game that comes out and it literally, when you use all the features, makes that a 1440p card. And you're like, what the freak, dude? I can only get 1440p on this. I mean, obviously, you know, most most people like once you once you understand PC and you get in there and you see like oh yeah it's 1440p at over 120 frames a second or it's 1440p at this and you get like ultra settings you're getting the ray tracing you're getting the full shebang and it's just looking absolutely incredible <coughs> you'll uh, you you'll you'll go from that i mean like right now your consoles are what 720p to 1080p most of the time upscaled to 4k ish whatever um but once you actually see native 1440p at max settings, you're like, oh, okay, yeah, that looks incredible. But <laughs> in your mind, you're thinking, oh, this is only 1440p, and you want 4K, <laughs> which is which is crazy to think that like the the console manufacturers they get away with so much, it's not even funny, man. They get away with a lot. They get away with a lot of 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 a. Uh, um they, they they get a lot they get away with a lot of fuckery dude they, they absolutely do uh so my my honest opinion about the 4080 super for me personally i don't really i don't really you know i i, I don't love it or hate it is is as like you know as as like a because i already had enough power in my in my pc stack but i did want to give the higher end of the nvidia stack uh, uh, an honest try and I've been really playing with it all weekend to, to really try to squeeze out whatever I can out of this to 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 experience the the 4080 super in in a way that you know that for my gaming habits but as it sits guys man I I, <clears throat> I just don't know if 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 recommending something as high as a 4080 super for new for new people coming into the uh, to, to PC I just don't think longevity wise and you know overall price to performance for for this card is is really going to deliver long term enough for you to be like yeah man this is great i mean i think it's going to be fine honestly for me and and what it does i mean obviously you know you'll, you'll have to get really good with you know understanding settings and and setting things up and, and figuring out how to uh how to maximize the, uh, the 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 potential of the 4080 super um that may be turning things like ray tracing off to to can to keep consistent high um settings or or turning your settings down from ultra to high maybe even medium settings which still look absolutely phenomenal um learning how to adjust these settings is is going to really you know dictate the longevity of of your purchase and and that is something to to really keep in mind i mean if you go into a mid-range you know the 500 hundred dollar card stack it's a little bit easier to justify paying another 500 dollars every other generation or every generation than it is paying another thousand plus dollars every generation every other generation to try to maintain that that um that consistency across the board and that's pretty much in my opinion what these gpus do if you upgrade every single generation you are basically just trying to maintain what you have from the day you get into pc gaming if you come in at a <clears throat> at like a a 70 a 70 you know stack on the um you know the 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 amd side or the, or the nvidia side or you come in at like this the, the 7800 you know the 800 stack over on on amd if you're upgrading every generation you're basically just trying to maintain what you what you already have but if you're if you're you know if you're waiting every other generation then 
then you can then 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 you have a little bit more flexibility and if you do that that's probably the smartest way to do that is yes after after the first couple of years you are going to start to see a little bit of decline in in your overall you know in your overall settings or performance or having to utilize you know um um gosh dang it <laughs> like fsr or dlss a lot more um maybe even dropping that from like quality to 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 balance to performance or something as the as the generation goes on but if you can make it through a couple of years you utilizing you know like amd's fluid motion frames or frame generation from nvidia you know other 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 things like dlss or fsr if you can if you can learn to utilize those and be okay with that overall image quality as opposed to just jumping right into it with with native resolution and doing all of that if you can manage that if you can get the best that that you can get out of that for for up to four years or or or, or even six years because i think that these new technologies especially with the 7000 series and the and the new you know 40 series from nvidia i do think that those technologies definitely have the potential to increase the longevity of these cards a lot more than a lot of people are giving them credit for at this point so over the course of time the 47 the 4080 super might still be impressive five years six years seven eight years down the road because it will still have dlss and it will still have frame generation and it will still have these features as well as you know the amd side amd might actually bring ai upscaling to the 7000 series later this year therefore propelling those these two stacks a lot further into the future than than typical older cards might have done and i think that Honestly, guys, I think that is kind of factored into the price because we're right here in the here and now with these cards coming out and, and what we're getting right now. But these technologies, whether you love them or hate them, they might actually save you more money later down the road and, and give you a better experience than, than your typical, like your older experience. Like right now, like the 10 series guys are probably really starting to feel like the pressure, you know, the 20 or, or the 20, or the, the 10 series guys are like really freaking out. The, the 20 series guys are starting to feel the pressure and there's not really much they can do about it. But fast forward to now with this new stack of cards, these might actually be a lot longer in the tooth than a lot of people are giving them credit for right now right now we're looking at the here and now we're like yeah this is this and this is that but later down the road once game engines get more optimized once you know things start to you know really factor in like you know direct storage and some of the other technologies the virtual um or um v uh v vr vrs and, and and mesh shaders and all of that stuff once all of these things actually start to be implemented a lot better into the overall gaming landscape and into you know like dx12 and you know uh, all of all of these operating systems once all of this stuff kind of catches up we might still see you know like a little bit of a little bit of um performance gains in the future on certain games that because these cards are definitely capable of that we might actually see a little bit better gains you know later down the road obviously they're going to keep maxing things out to to kind of try to keep you to keep upgrading and there's definitely going to be those that want to stay on the bleeding edge but i do think that these cards actually offer the best potential for longevity over over like the older cards in in both of these stacks i just don't think that you know <clears throat> i think that i think that you know i think that frame generation and you know like dlss and, and fsr and all of these these things are are going to matter more later down the road than they actually matter right now right now yeah you can get in there with like your 4060 or your 7800 or your 7600 xt and you can like yeah i can do 4k with with my fsr and my dlss but i mean those cards they're gonna be where they're at in like the 1080p stack <laughs> But they might actually last 1080p significantly longer due to those technologies. Whereas people are trying to get like, yeah, we're getting this. And, and I do it myself, you know, or like the 4070, you know, the 1440p card, maybe, you know, the uh, the extra added, you know, features are going to be able to push that card to propel that, 
significantly further into the future whereas right now we're just looking at the here and now and i don't know if that is the uh i don't know i don't, I don't know if we can completely judge the cards that we have until we've actually seen how long that longevity is going to play out. I know the 20 gigs of VRAM on that 7900 XT is going to help that card for a while. I know that, you know, that the, there's there's going to be, you know, games that are going to come out with the uh with with the with the 4080 super that yes you know the dlss and all of that stuff is going to definitely help you're going to be able to you know come down on the settings a little bit <clears throat> if and 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 be able to produce some some amazing looking stuff well into the future so that's kind of the way i'm looking at you know the overall price of the 4080 super is like yes it is high but i think I, I'm, I'm trying to give Nvidia the benefit of the doubt. I'm trying to give AMD the benefit of the doubt for the for the for the extreme raise in prices, because I do think that these cards potentially could last longer into the future due to these um, technologies that both of them offer. So, if you guys like this content, don't forget to like and subscribe, my friends, and I will see you guys in the next one.